from about 25 feet in the air and pointed more your direction. All right, now it's about 10 over 9. 10 over 9 now, over. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Thanks for checking out the channel. I'm Ham Radio Dude. A few months ago, Don in 5 skt a good friend of mine, he sent me this Giga Parts carbon fiber mast. He said, dude, I think you're really going to like this mast. I agree, Don. It's a great mast. We'll talk about that later. Really, though, Don sent me this mast because he had a request, which involves right here. The top of this mast has a hole in it and a lock in it. And Don said, even though this is a great mast, there's very few accessories on the top here or for the top here. And I'd like to see a few. And I have an idea. I'm not going to ruin Don's idea or surprise. In fact, it's going to be a complete surprise to everybody once it comes out. But until then, today I wanted to show you a few products I'm working on. And then we're going to strength and durability test one product in particular. This should be pretty fun. Let's check it out. Now I want to do my best to not go too far off track, stay on topic and on focus. Squirrel. Today though, we're going to test the horizontal dipole topper and it looks just like this. Now it looks like a couple of dude spikes if you know what those are. If not, there's video links below. Originally when this was designed, I designed it in PETG, which is a 3D printing filament with about 85% infill, meaning 85% of the internals were also printed. And then the rest was air, 15% air essentially. Now with PETG, it felt durable, but I know there's a breaking point and I could actually see the PETG bending at a certain point. It's not necessarily something you'd want to hoist in the air with a dipole. And the, the goal of this dipole right here was really ham sticks, but also telescoping poles. And what I found was as I extended the telescoping pole out, more weight that's away from the center piece, the more, eh, the more of a bend, the more stress is actually going to be on this center conductor here. I think the best thing we could do now is to recognize that nylon or PA12, which what this was printed in, it's very durable and I can't seem to bend it. I can't seem to even get it to want to break as much as I try. Let's go put it up on a pole, put it in the air. You know what? Let's just start off with 20 meter telescoping antennas on both sides and see how this does. See if we can make contact, see if we run into any issues and discuss them in just a few moments. Now there are a few things we want to check here just real quick. And because of this wire, that is a potential failure point or another variable we have to consider. And so I just want to make sure that this section of the dipole uh, isn't giving continuity to this section of the dipole because that shouldn't happen. And it's not. But we also want to make sure that this section of the dipole has continuity to the shield of the actual connector. And if that's not happening, always check to make sure that these little prongs are actually in your multimeter and try again. Very good. So we have continuity from one side of the dipole to the shield. And then the other side should not go to the other side. We're good. And just for confirmation, we're going to go on the other side and we're going to check the... Yeah, we're all good. I just checked the internal plug of the SO239 and we're good to go. So we're going to go put this on the mast right now and talk a little bit about that real quick. Now that carbon fiber mast is great, but there's uh, nothing on the bottom for it to go on the ground. I suppose you could use a stake or something like that. But at 25 feet, I wanted something a little bit more durable. I found this speaker stand from Goodwill and it works okay. But if I really needed to, I think I can make a guy rod right here and just guy the pole or the mast off so that it stays in the air. Because I think after about 25 feet, even after about 20 feet, it might get a little squirrely. So as we already have everything on our dipole or our little base piece that I made, uh, we're just going to place this uh, circular piece inside the carbon fiber pole and lock it into place. One thing I'm going to make a note of here is if this goes all the way down, the carbon fiber pole can't lock because they kind of hit each other. Maybe that's a design flaw that I need to fix, but really if I just brought this up a little bit and locked it into place, it would be okay. Furthermore, I think in the future what I'll do is I'm going to have two angled pieces or curved pieces that come off of here and go up to the horizontal portion of this design. Why would I do that? Because 
anytime you have a 90 degree angle or a break, that's going to be a weak point of the design. Okay, and so to alleviate that, we add curves. We could easily see right now, this is completely fine at uh, six feet with these fully collapsed. But what happens if we extend them out all the way? Well, what I'm doing here is I'm slowly bringing out both sides of the telescoping antenna. And I'm watching this to see if there's any break points. I fully expect to break some of these PA-12 uh, connectors that I made. That's kind of part of the testing process. Yes, it could get a little pricey. Uh, however, it is also very fun. <laughs> when fully extended, these should be able to do 20 meters. So you have a full quarter wavelength. Actually, you have a half a wavelength dipole on 20 meters if this works. Now, <laughs> surprising to me, that is a lot of pressure right here. I fully expect this to break and it's not. I now have this actually fully expanded on both sides and it's uh, almost like rounded, you know, there's such a slope because of these antennas. Uh, the centerpiece actually still looks pretty good to be honest and I don't see any signs of it breaking. We're going to hoist this up in a second but I think the problem is is these telescoping poles were like an LI Express special. They bend easy, they break easy. That could be it, but I don't have anything else at the moment to test. So we're going to work with what we got. Let's hoist it up, but first we got to put coax on here. I'm not even worried about the strength at this point. I don't, I mean, listen, if I do this right now and I'm shaking this thing as much as I can to simulate wind, it's really not even breaking. So I'm not too worried about it. Uh, I think that the antennas themselves are going to fail before the center piece actually does. So that's kind of nice. Yeah, no problems there. I'm going to check the standing wave ratio. And uh, again, I'm going to sim simulate some wind real quick here. So if this was windy, I could expect this whole thing to be shaking like this. And I'm trying to break this right now, right? So I'm giving it kind of shaking that you might not even see with traditional wind. And really the fail point is on the antennas and not the center base piece itself. I feel pretty good about this. Now, most people aren't going to use telescoping antennas. Why would I test it with that? Well, that weight capacity, that weight load really is testing my product to the extreme and it's holding up now. So, you know, 20 meter half wavelength dipole, no problem. I wouldn't want to go too much further, to be honest with you. Realistically, people are going to use hamstick dipoles while portable. And if they're setting this up as a permanent solution with a carbon fiber mast, they might even be using a very lightweight aluminum or a wire dipole from tree to tree with the center conductor being a, a carbon fiber mast, something along those lines. Or maybe they have multiple carbon fiber masts. I don't know exactly, but this works and we're going to test some contacts now. So let's go to 20 meter. Golf Charlie, parks on the air, you are dead. A Whiskey 9 Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Foxtrot. Roger that. Correction on the call. It's Whiskey 9 Triple Fox W9 FFF, and you're also a 5.7 into Northern Illinois. Beautiful signal. I got the call sign corrected. And uh, thanks for having me down today, my friend. 73. Good luck, 73. Whiskey 9 Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Foxtrot. Whiskey 9 Foxtrot in there. Yes, sir. Whiskey 9 Foxtrot. Foxtrot, Foxtrot. W9FFF, and you're a 5 by 9 here into Northern Illinois. Well, thank you, sir. You're 5 9. I want to make sure I do another thing up here. Is it uh, Whiskey 9 Foxtrot, Foxtrot? One more. Uh, Whiskey 9 Triple Fox. Three Fs. W9FFF. -F -F. Yeah. Very good, sir, and thanks for coming back to the call. Uh, good luck with that activation. 73 to you. Air Ariel, uh, Kilo India 4, Papa, Bravo, Juliet from Whiskey 9, Fox, Fox, Fox. I just changed the direction of the antenna, uh, pointing toward Florida, so maybe I'll get you now a little bit better. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're a 5x5 five five now. See, I had, I had the dipole pointed the wrong direction, so pointed it your way. You're good to go. You sound good even on 20 watts. Oh, you're most welcome. Thank you. This is KG9, Radio Flash Track. Whiskey 9, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Foxtrot. Whiskey 9, Fox, Fox, Fox. You are 5 by 7 and you are number 2, 0, 0, 5, 7, over. 
Uh, you are also a 5 by 757 into Northern Illinois. You got it. Thank you, sir, and good luck in your activation. Enjoy it. So I am really confident that this centerpiece right here is going to be reliable. And originally I was thinking ham sticks on here. Yeah, you could use these telescoping antennas and it seems to be fine. This is reliable. It didn't break. You know, uh, I guess the only other thing to do would be to see how I could break it. But at this point, I think I'm going to send this off to Gigaparts. I'm going to send this over to Don. I'm going to have those guys test these out. They're going to find things that are wrong with this. And, and the reason I say that is I could build this. I could design it. In my eyes, everything works fine. They then use it and have a different use for it. They're going to figure out that, hey, for the use that I was thinking, it doesn't work. And so the next portion of my building this is really sending it out and then getting the feedback, listening to their feedback and adapting to the changes that they think could be made, provided their wise changes or their, their uh, valuable changes. Yesterday, I tested out the strength, the integrity of the horizontal dipole mount, as you just saw. This morning, I was deciding I wanted to send uh, these parts, in particular all three of these parts, to Gigaparts, as well as Don N5SKT. And while I was building their prototypes, I came into a couple of realizations, which I think is important to talk about and walk through so I don't leave everybody in the dark. But also, if you're going through this process, maybe you'll run into this issue and you'll, you'll recognize, oh yeah, somebody else has run into that issue. So first off, let me zoom in on this and talk about these issues and what I want to do to correct them. First thing I want to show you though is, you know, a few episodes ago with the dude spike, I mentioned how I couldn't fit an SO239 cable in here. There was a lot of input. It is a bad connector. And again, I want to emphasize that be careful where you get your connectors from. This was from a ham fest and the quality is not the great. You could see uh, a couple identifying marks as holes here, here, here. And then you look at this one right here and maybe upon first glance, they're the same kind of style, but they're really not. There's a lot more quality in this one. Uh, this one seems to be used with like a mold or something. And uh, again, the SO239 connector, PL259 connector didn't even fit in the SO239 hole. These ones are a lot better. And you're probably wondering where I got these from. I get a lot of those questions. Uh, I'll be completely fair and honest with you. I get them from W5 swl.com this is the part number i'm not affiliated in any way make sure you're not using the cheap connectors and we get this little guy here this washer and this washer is too thick let me show you what i mean if by chance i'm putting together something that looks like this on this side it seems completely fine and that's because this is going to be the second portion of the, and yeah, I know there'll be a lock washer in there, a second portion of the antenna, right? But where we actually have the antenna, the SO239 connector or adapter, you have a lot more that you're working with. And let me show you. I didn't put the counterpoise wire in there, but still look at that right there. There's just not enough room because this wall is so thick that really that, that 3 8 post can't fit. So couple of th things I have to do. I have to shave this washer down. Right now what we have is we have this little washer that goes over our ring connector and it looks fine. I mean, even from here, it kind of looks fine, but you might be able to see the lip on the nylon portion pops up a little bit. And we don't want that because once you go to put your SO239 adapter on the 3 8 inch posts, it doesn't fully seat in there. Now I'm over exaggerating this right here, but it doesn't fully seat in there and it causes this wire to be loose. I don't know if you could see that, but I'm doing my best. So all I'm gonna do real quick is sand this little washer down on both sides to make it uh, a, little bit, uh, a little bit lower of a profile, if you will. And I'm just gonna do this on both sides until the profile's lower and that 3 ace post fits through a little bit better. So again, what's the solution in the future? The future solution would be to reduce the profile of the actual mount itself just slightly. It shouldn't inf affect the overall strength too much. And realistically, again, cast aluminum or sand casted aluminum is what I think it's being called. 
Okay, now that we got that washer sanded down, uh, we're just gonna take our 3 ace SO239 adapter. We're gonna put it through the ring terminal first and then the actual washer. The washer now locks into place and that is a nice low profile. It's not going anywhere. It's constantly making a contact with the shield, which then again goes to the other side with the 3 ace there. And now when I put this through, it's got a little bit more of that 3 eighths post that's sticking through, but it's still not too much. What I might do is I might sand some of this down. Uh, however, I think for the prototype in this case, I just know in the future to make this a lower profile. I lied. Um, I'm going to sand this down a little bit. So now you might wonder why don't I just, you know, order some other ones that are thinner profile. Hey, great idea. And I totally agree with you, except a, they're a little pricey to be constantly making modifications every little thing. I'd rather write down all the issues, adjust them, and then have a big uh, update or modification to the actual base plate itself or the, the piece that I've designed itself. Uh, the, the other thing is, is I really want to get these two gigaparts and done in 5SKT with the understanding that these are still kind of under development and I want their feedback. It comes down to two things, time and money. For the purpose of these demonstrations and prototypes, I think this will be fine. Let's try to wrap it up here. It's starting to rain, thunder's coming, all that good stuff. Uh, I spent the last three days really just kind of testing heavily three different mounts for the top of this gigaparts pole. First thing I want to make a note of, I'm not being paid to say this or anything along those lines, but I was shaking that pole pretty hard at times and this gigaparts pole was holding up pretty strong. I, I really wanted to drop it, but I need this. I need this for future design and development and testing. It's a little expensive, but you're gonna get quality worth. And even while this was being designed and tested this last three days, I came up with so many more ideas for mount toppers on these carbon fiber poles. One of them I'm working on right now, I will tell you it's gonna be a camera mount. I would love the opportunity to get my GoPro 25, 50 feet in the air looking over Lake Michigan, and that's gonna be perfect for it. I don't know that Gigaparts has considered this carbon fiber mast for uh, photographers, but there's a market out there, I bet you. <laughs> anyway, guys, I had fun testing, building, designing, trying to break all this good stuff. There'll be more videos in the future where we go into maybe more detail on these things, uh, but I'm just having a good time. Let me know what you think about these things. Is there a use for anything like this or is it silly? Again, I know you could definitely just throw together some pieces of metal you know, from the store but it's kind of fun, again, to design and test things. In the spirit of amateur radio, I'm Ham Radio Dude 73.